Hey everyone, it's Steve here, back with part two of our Beach Waves Splash tutorial, where we create waves with foam and splashes using Blender's Fluid Simulator and Dynamic Paint and Particles and all that cool stuff. Part two, we're going to be doing some of the materials and lighting and rendering. We have a lot of different render layers to work with uh, in this part, so it should be fun. Um, and let's get right into it. Okay, so we'll start off by setting up the lighting to our scene. And I'm just going to use the lamp here and go ahead to the lamp settings and first off change to cycles render that's the most important thing make sure you're in the right render engine uh, then we're going to change it to a sun lamp and we'll choose use nodes and we'll give it a strength of about 14 um, and just a slight hue of warmth to it so a tiny bit of warmth to our sun lamp and uh, and then we'll change the size down to about a 0 0.05 so sharper shadows by changing that down and uh, let's get the angle just kind of worked out. I'm just going to rotate it along the Z axis to be kind of pointing that way. And I think that will work pretty well. Uh, maybe just a little bit more along the Z, rotating along the Z. And then let's place our camera. So first off, we're going to give it a bit of a, a zoomed in look. So I'm going to change it to about a 50 on the focal length. And then I'm just going to kind of position where I want my angle to be in 3D view. And with the camera selected, I can go Alt, Control, 0 and snap the camera to that rotation. Now I just have to zoom out by hitting G and my middle mouse wheel and pulling it out to a, uh, a spot that looks about right. So I'm just going to kind of like position it in here. Um, this isn't like a finished scene. This is just basically a example render. If you were going to render it in a, uh, an animation, you'd probably want to hide some of the corners and stuff. But I'm not, not worried about that uh, in this tutorial as it's just showing you the techniques and not the finished, what could be your finished results. All right. So with that, just kind of set up there. Uh, maybe a little higher of an angle would be good. Okay, something like that. Looks to be good enough for me. All right. Zoomed out a little bit more. Okay. And then um, let's set up the world settings. Also, these rocks that I have down here, they should be moved up into the scene a bit more. So they're going to be a little bit more visible there. Um, and let's set up some of the world lighting. So I'm just going to use nodes, and we're just going to choose an environment, uh, environment sky, <laughs> sky texture in the uh, color here. So just choose that box, choose a sky texture. If I drop the preview down here, we can see what it's going to look like. And I'm going to change the settings to probably about a five for the turbid, turb, turbidly. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to try and pronounce that. And the ground will make about a 1.5, or I'm sorry, 0.15. There we go. And the strength can be increased all the way up to five. So we have a nice bright environment. Uh, maybe a little lower here. We'll take that down about 4.9. But uh, it, it should be good. All right. So with that set, if I switch to rendered now, we should get at least some environment color. Yes, we do. Everything else is washed out and not good looking. But that is uh, <laughs> that is fine because we haven't got to that yet. Um, so let's start with the sand. Um, we'll grab our sand texture here. And we'll split our window up so we can use some nodes down here. And I'll change it to the node editor. Here we're going to go new material. And I'm going to add in the texture. So this is just a texture that you can find. You know, link in the description. Go ahead and download it. And input texture. Image texture. I'm going to open it up. And we can just connect it right to the diffuse for now. And we need... A texture mapping node so we're gonna go vector mapping connect that up and we need a texture coordinate node so input texture coordinate and we're gonna choose generated all right now we're just gonna have it repeat about seven times so go ahead and change that to seven and uh, now we should have our texture loaded there if I let me just kind of hide the water so that's not being uh, distracting and we need to hide this object as well, right there. I'm not selecting the right one yet. There we go. Hide that one as well. And we need to change a few settings in the color management. So we're going to be using Filmic, and this will prevent things from getting completely washed out. As you can see, suddenly you can see the sand now as soon as you switch to Filmic. It's like magic, <laughs> but it gives you way more range in your colors. Okay. So now that we're in Filmic, you can see that my rock textures aren't working. We'll have to fix that later. But let's open up our dynamic paint for the surface here. 
Now, before we can use the dynamic paint, we need to blur it. And this is really just easier to do in a new blend file because it's pretty much, it just helps to not have to change the settings for this file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quick go new. We're just gonna reload the startup file. Make sure you saved, so you're at your latest point. And let's go new, reload the startup file. And we're gonna go to right to the compositor. Go to use nodes, uh, might as well check backdrop. I'm gonna delete the render layer here or just disconnect it. And I'm gonna go shift A, add in an input image. I'm gonna open that bake sequence that we did right at the end of the last tutorial. So the paint file here, you're just gonna hit A to select all of them, open, and then we can choose cycle, and we wanna start it at frame 150. Now we also have to change the timeline to this new blend file to start at 150 and end at 400, just like our other one. I know this is a little hard to see here, I can pull it out so you can see that a little better, but the start and end, 150, 400. All right. So if we connect that right up to the composite node and go control shift to add in a viewer node, you can see we have our, our uh, texture there, but it needs to be blurred. So I'm gonna go ahead and go vector, uh, color, filter, blur. Drop that in here with the viewer node so we can see what's happening and change it to tent. And we'll just give it a blur about 25 and 25. So nicely blurred. And then I'm going to drop in a color ramp. So vector, converter, color ramp. All right, drop that right in there so we can get the black and white image. And we can kind of tighten up that blur now as it doesn't need to be quite as blurred, but this also extends the boundaries a bit. So something like that, uh, maybe that's a little too strong. Also, maybe our blur is a little too strong. Um, tone it back just a little bit. And then we just need to set the render resolution here. We'll set it to 1024 by 1024. So we have a square pattern, just like our images here, set it to 100%. Um, and we also have to make sure that this is scaled to the right size. So we have to drop in a distort scale node and just change it to be the render size right there. So it's scaled up properly. Um, but we can also change the, uh, the mode here from linear to ease, as it might give a little bit better of a blur effect there. But that's essentially it. You connect the last node to the composite node there, and we should be good to go. Um, I might give it just a little bit more blur. I think it was a little better blurred a little bit more. Check what it's looking like. It looks looks pretty good. So now you just have to choose your output file. I'm going to do it right where the paint files are, except I'm going to create a new folder in that folder. And we'll just call it blurred so we know what the right files are for us to use, except and it can just be a basic PNG. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, it doesn't need RGBA, it just needs RGB and you can go ahead and render that animation out. This will go really quick. You can see as it just flies through and renders the uh, the blurred frames out, and you can see it moving right here actually as the waves come over, which is pretty cool. But uh, I'll jump back with you guys when that's done and we can use it in our file. All right, that finished. We'll just bring up our wave project again here. And uh, what we're gonna do now is on our sand texture, we're gonna go ahead and add in a new image texture. So texture, image texture, and we're going to open up that image sequence of blurred images. So go to your paint folder, go to your blurred folder, hit A to open up everything, and click open image. Now this will automatically set it to the right amount of frames, but you have to make sure you set it to start at frame 150. So don't forget that, and then go ahead and choose auto refresh and cycle. And now we just have to plug in a color ramp node, so we have a little bit more control over this. So color, where we have it, vector, nope, converter color ramp. Alrighty connect that up to the factor and we're just going to whoops let's do that again okay and we're just going to multiply it to our image texture here so go ahead and add in a color mix multiply so mix and multiply and then drop it into the bottom actually we're just gonna drop it into the factor of how much this gets multiplied onto it and this can be a slightly darker image something like that might actually be fine already um, and we can pull this color ramp in a little tighter. If I go to rendered view so we can see what's happening, we should see, if I go rendered, all right, we have our wet spot on our sand, and it's actually looking pretty nice. Um, obviously, it looks a little weird without the waves there, but um, it's doing its thing. Uh, we, can, uh, we can kind of increase the amount with the color ramp here now and have some control over it, but I'm going to leave it pretty much as is like that. And the other thing to do is the sand is a little bit bright. So I'm gonna duplicate this multiply node, drop it right here. And we can just kind of tone down the amount by uh, using the color here. 
making it something a little darker. So it's multiplying a little bit of a darker color over it. All right, and then we can turn the factor to be as much as we want, more or less. I think something like that looks looks pretty good. Maybe even less. Maybe go 2.5 or 0.25, I should say. Um, but that looks not too bad. So with that done, let's move on to the ocean material. So we want to go Option H to unhide our ocean now. And this is actually a really cool material that uh, was, I'm not sure if Lucas came up with it or not, but if he did, it's pretty clever. Um, it uses some math nodes and a light path node to kind of control the depth of the water, give you a lot of control over how it ends up looking. Um, it's a little bit more confusing than a normal material node that I would show is, but it's really worth it. And it's okay if you don't understand everything that you're doing, um, as long as you get the right results. Yeah, you'll learn eventually. <laughs> so go ahead and click New, and we're going to add a new material in, and I'm going to delete the diffuse, and we're going to add in a shader. Let's just start with our mix shader. Da -da -dum, mix shader. And that will be the last node we need. Um, and now I'm going to add in the light path node. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and move over here so we can kind of fit our node tree. And I'm going to go Shift A, Input, Light Path. All right, and if I zoom in here a little bit more, you can see that our light path node has all these different options, but we're only gonna be using the camera ray and the, let me see here, the ray length right there. And we're gonna use these with some math nodes. So go ahead and drop in a converter math node, and we're gonna change this to multiply, and we're gonna drop the ray length into the multiply. So this will give us some control over this value. And I'm going to change it to a minus 0.5. And uh, we can go ahead and add in one more math node. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And this one is going to be power. So I'm going to change it to power right there. And this will be connected into the bottom socket. And the top socket is going to be a value of about 2. And this is going to kind of control the depth of the water now. When we adjust this power, it will make it more or less deep looking of uh, water. And so I'm going to now just use a add node, or not add, but an add math node, so I'll just duplicate it, change it to add, and I'll drop this into the top socket, and I'm going to drop the camera ray into the bottom socket. So with the camera ray connected, and the power connected, we are ready to roll. Um, for this add node, I need to duplicate it one more time, drop this into the top socket, and then the last thing I'm going to use is a geometry node. So this is an input geometry and, uh, and then I'm going to drop in one more math node and change it to subtract, okay? And then the back facing is connected to the bottom, and the top value could be 1. I'm sorry, you don't want clamp selected, and this will go into the bottom socket. So there's one more math node. I hope this isn't getting too confusing for you guys. I'll pause it so you can, uh, can kind of see exactly what it looks like at the end. And this is a minimum node, so we'll change it to minimum, and plug this into the top, and the bottom value to be 1. This will just kind of normalize the values, I believe. So I'm going to go shift space so you can see exactly what this little node setup is. Um, not that complicated, um, and like I said, this will can kind of control the depth, and this will kind of normalize it. I'm not exactly 100% sure on how everything works when I'm using math nodes myself either. Um, it's not something I'm really great at, but that is the setup to get the ocean shader that you want. So go ahead and use it, um, and it should work for you. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop in a glass shader. So shader, glass, there we have it. And this is going to be our main source of water, obviously. And I'll move this out a little bit. I'll change the IOR value to be about a 1.31. The roughness to be very light, so a 0 0.01 will be good. This is going to go into the top socket here on our mix shader, and I'm going to drop in a color ramp node, and this is going to control what values are brighter and what values are darker by using our clever math node here. So this is just going to be the factor for a color ramp, and now we're going to create what our ocean colors should be. So dropping that into the color on the glass, I'm going to leave this black, so the absolute furthest value over here is black, and then I'll drop in another node here, and I'll give it kind of a dark blue. So just pick a nice vibrant sort of dark blue color for this, maybe a little brighter, something something around there will work pretty well, I think. And then we'll hit, hold control, left click again to add another one. This is going to be a brighter, brighter, more vibrant color. 
And then one more right around here. Hit control, and this is going to be a very sort of light, light blue. Something like that looks to be good. And then choosing Cardinal as your interpolation. <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that right, but um, it will help to give some nice results as well. So something like that. Uh, maybe this has to be a little lighter colored. Go a little down. Somewhere around there. And this can be tweaked, obviously, um, depending on what you need. But something like that should... Well, I'll leave it at that for now. We can tweak it later if we think it's necessary. Um, again, this is something that you just tweak as you go. And, okay, so then it's plugged into our glass shader, and then we have this mix shader. This mix shader is going to be connected to a transparent shader. So go shader, transparent, connect it right up to the bottom socket there, and then the color for this transparent is going to be the same as the glass. Just grab that color ramp. Okay, and that is our basic shader. Uh, we just need one more light path node, so input light path. And the shadow ray is going to be the factor for the transparency. And that will give it a nice looking uh, ocean result. So that is the bare bones, or well, not the bare bones, but that's basically it. The last little extra detail is some displacement. So this is done with starting with a texture coordinate node and a vector mapping node. Vector mapping. We're going to go ahead and change go ahead and connect the generated to the vector. I'm going to use a noise texture to give a little bit of extra displacement. It'll really look nice on top of our uh, on top of our ocean. So this is going to be just a basic noise texture. Like I said, vector connected to the vector. The scale of this can be about a 40. Um, detail, we'll leave at 2. And we're just going to put this into a multiply node uh, just in case we want to tweak it, but I feel like we might not have to. So go ahead and plug it into a multiply node, top factor here, and then into the displacement. Now this will add a nice bit of uh, bump to it, but it isn't going to be animated. And of course we want animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to animate now the vector mapping node here to give us some animation to work with. So over on frame one here, I'm going to go ahead and take the Z axis here insert a keyframe by hovering over it and hitting I, and then I'm jumping to frame 400 all the way to the end, and we'll go ahead and give it a keyframe value of about 2.5. So it's gonna move nicely across that. Now one other thing to uh, not forget is that keyframe is always on a curve, and we want it to be consistent. So I'm gonna jump over to our graph editor, and if I grab this node, you can see that's our keyframe there. And I just want to grab both of those handles and change it to vector. So it's a consistent change across. Excellent. And that will give us some nice displacement. We should be able to switch to rendered view here and see what we're getting. All right, and we also have to hide, of course, our fluid object here. So just grabbing that. Um, we'll go ahead and turn the view off of it now as soon as I grab it. Um, right here, cube one is our fluid object. We want to turn off the view and of course the render for that as well. Although I don't know if that was the right object. Let me go to solid view so I can see what I'm grabbing. Yes, you don't get rendered. This is plain. Okay, same thing with our clash object back, back here, our wave object. Turn off the render on that so we don't see it. Um, but we can also turn off the view for now because we've already baked our, uh, our simulation. So if I go to render now, you can see we have our ocean, and it looks it looks pretty nice. Some nice looking water. If we go to camera view, you can get a little bit more of the right angle. Um, and like I said, you can tweak the depth of the ocean now using our. Let me grab our node setup here. Using our um, our power value. So if I change this to something really high, you can see it looks like it's a really deep murky ocean. But if I change it to something really low, it looks like well that's a little too low. <laughs> One point five maybe. You can see it looks like nice shallow water. So a lot of control, that's why this node setup is so great. I'm going to leave it about a 0.18, um, and you might want to tweak it depending on your uh, your scene. And again, you might want to tweak your colors here depending on your fluid stem to take how much you want the water to kind of fade out at the tip there um, and such. I think something like this is looking pretty good though. Maybe this value could be, well, maybe this value could be a little brighter. If I make that a little brighter, you can see the, the transition there a little bit more. Um, and it's just something to play with.
I'll go a little bit more blue, but maybe go a little darker with this material. A little bit more rich. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty nice. Um, maybe a little brighter too. Go 100%. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. Maybe I can go back to a little bit more intense here now. And you can see our ocean shader is doing its thing. Um, let's quick fix that rock issue. I feel like the texture is set to black. Yes, we just want to set it to rock. Uh, actually, the materials didn't transfer over for these um, because I quit and came back. So we're just going to quick grab those rock textures again, and those are just going to be appended over from that file again, like I said. Um, and if you didn't catch the other part, if you want the, uh, the these rocks, you can get them with the Realistic Nature Asset Pack for just 10 bucks, or you can make them yourself with the tutorial I created. There should be a link on the screen right around now. But I'm just going to grab these three materials and append them. So we can now grab our rocks here and give this the rock texture 2. And we should see our texture load in there. Yes, we have it. And this one will be our rock texture 3. Or actually, this one might be rock 1. Yeah, we'll go rock 1 for you. Alrighty, that looks pretty nice. Um, and one other thing to note is when you do a fluid sim, usually you kind of have this water wrapping around the outside of it. And if I jump into solid view here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about, I'll hit 5 on my number pad to kind of zoom in on it. And hit period to zoom in on it even more. You can see underneath the water we have like the water sim attached to it and that's just not very realistic looking for underwater water so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tab into edit mode grab the mesh and scale holding shift to just scale us a little bit but to kind of get it coming out of that water mesh so we don't have much of that water attached to it and it'll just look a lot better when it's rendered then you can't go too far with this but um, a little bit will give you a little better looking simulation so I'm going to tab in edit mode here again and scale these rocks up just a little bit. Something you might want to do for any of your collision objects. Um, you could also use a shape key to do this if you didn't want to be um, changing the scale and not being able to go back. You could use a shape key um, to get the same results. But something like that, if I zoom in here, is it looking better? Yes, it is. Um, we'll give you a little better realistic looking results. Maybe I could scale it even a little more by just hitting L and scaling. But I think we guys, I think we guys <laughs> are getting close to being able to render. Now, before we can render our final scene, um, we have to first make sure that we're happy with our, um, our camera view because we're going to be rendering out render layers. And if you change the camera view, you have to render out all your layers again. So make sure you're happy with the camera uh, positioning and then change your start frame to about 250. And if I jump to that here, we can see that we have a nice fluid sim at that point. And if we go to our rendered view, let's just kind of check out what it's looking like. Um, it's looking pretty good. I feel like our, our ocean um, waves might be a little dark, our dynamic paint. In which case, you could just come here and make this a little bit of a brighter value. And if I go all the way up to one, you can barely see it. So yeah, something, something a little lighter will be nice. And maybe take down the blacks here a little bit to soften that. A little bit because it's looking a little squared right now um, and yeah just taking it down a little bit looks a little better okay maybe make this a little bit more intense still something like that doesn't look too bad and we may even be able to get more frames out of our animation animation if I jump back to frame 200 um, I just kind of check it to see what the sim looks like at this point it still looks pretty good so you can try more frames and maybe you can get away with some more um, okay, so let's start rendering some render layers. Um, first off, we're going to render our particles. So I'm going to create a new render layer for this. Go ahead and go plus, and we'll name this uh, Splashes. And this is going to be just the bottom layer here. And we want to uncheck the top layer so we're not rendering anything else. And we need to create a quick new material for our ocean to, uh, to render this particle pass. So for the material that we're going to be using on the ocean for a splash pass, we need to uh, we need to just barely tweak our ocean material. So let's go ahead and name our main ocean material and click this F option. This is going to keep it in the scene even if it's not used on an object. Otherwise, when you quit and reopen Blender, you'll have lost your material if it's not attached to an object. Clicking that will fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and click plus now, grab that ocean material. And we're going to click that 3 to make it its own material. And then we'll click the F again to make sure it stays around. 
um, and then we go dot p for ocean particles and we can go ahead and take off this one because we click that f it will still stick around um, okay so now the tweaks to this material is just going to be it doesn't use displacement so take that off and we need a separate color ramp node as it's going to be kind of an underwater sort of color for the particles so go ahead and drop that into the color ramp and we're just going to delete these handles because we only need two handles for this color ramp node and it's going to be kind of a dark green which might be kind of an underwater color here so something kind of dark and murky blue green is good right around there and then we'll just leave it white um, and then we don't need the glass shader for this we're going to be replacing it with a refraction shader so shader and refraction drop that in right there just connect the color to the color and the roughness can be zero but the IRR should be actually let's make the roughness the same as the glass so 0 0.01 um, and the IRR should be 1.31, just like the glass as well. And this is going to be, of course, the top socket instead of the glass shader. So the glass shader really could be deleted here, but I'll just leave it around in case we need it. So that's the only changes. Um, no displacement, this new color ramp, and the new refraction node instead of the glass. And then over here, we're going to change the value of 2 for our depth to be 40. So it's a very deep ocean. Maybe we can get away with a little less, 35. Um, and let's kind of see what that's looking like if we went to rendered view here with our ocean particles and you can see that's the result we're getting if i crank this all the way up to 40 it's even more so but we don't need to go there all right now i'm going to switch to the bottom render layer here because we're going to be rendering our uh, our particles out here and we also have to make sure that our sun layer is on both layers so i'm going to hit m and hold shift to make sure it's on both okay so with our particle layer here um, and our ocean shader setup. We don't want our sand to render in this pass. So I'm going to pull this down here. And you can see this is our sand. I'm just going to turn the render off on that. And I'm going to change the color for these rocks. These rocks need to be black, as they're basically just a mask for the particles in this pass. So I don't want to lose these materials. So I'm going to click that F to make sure they stick around. But now I'm going to change them to black. Now black is just a diffuse material. If you want to see me create it real quick, it's just a new material. Boom. And diffuse and black. That's all it is. So we'll name it black so you guys know what it is. And uh, we'll apply it to both of our collision objects here. Okay. So with that done, we're getting close to being able to render our particle pass. We just need to create the material for our particles. So I'm just going to grab our icosphere here, as it's easier to grab here than find the little particle in there. And it's going to get its own material. So go ahead and click New Material. And this is just a Diffuse and Shift A Shader Mix Shader. And we're just going to mix it with a Transparent Shader. So that's translucent. We want to make sure it's transparent. All right. Drop that in the bottom. And we're going to give it kind of a darker material here. So I'm going to take it down to about a 0.5 or 0.4. Just 0.48 is good. So a darker sort of diffuse color, and it's only going to be mixed with a 0.95. So it's mostly transparent, as you can see in the preview here. Mostly a transparent sphere, just a tiny bit of uh, color. All right, so with that set up, everything is almost where it should be. Now a few things to remember when we're rendering our particle pass is, first of all, we want transparent checked in our render settings. So do that, and we want in the world settings... This is something that's important that you turn off for the, the particle pass, but turn back on for your main passes. But for the particle pass, we want to turn off the glossy transmission in the render layers for the world. I mean, sorry, the object data here for the world and for our ocean. So grab the ocean um, right there. And we're going to change under the object settings, the cycle settings. We need to turn off glossy and we need to turn off transmission. With those things set, though, if I give ourselves a test render here, we just jump into the middle here so we have some more particles in the scene, save our project, and give it a quick test render. Um, I'm going to have to also set up the render layer in the compositor before we can see what we're getting, but we should be getting our particles rendering.
All right, and we have a few issues here as some things are still rendering that shouldn't be rendering, and that is our obstacle here. Let me hit escape, and uh, we have to make sure we hide our collision box down here. Don't want it rendering either. We can turn off the view on it too. And let me go to the render layers here. Make sure we have just the bottom render layer selected. Yes, we don't need Z, a Z pass for this. And we can take the samples down a little bit, down to about a 75 is good. And in the camera settings here, let's make it a 1280 by 720 render. So it's not a, a huge time to <laughs> render. Take down the render time a little bit. And let's see if that's looking better when we render it now. And there you have it. You can see that our particles are rendering nicely. We have the cool foam floating on the surface of our water just like we want it. So this is a pass that we can go ahead and render out now. Um, it does seem like it's kind of hovering back a little bit more than we want and not on the front here. Um, let me just quick check. Maybe we can increase the, the particle size a little bit. I'm just going to go to our Icosphere, tab into edit mode, grab it, and uh, let me see what the size is right now. If I go up here, oh, I can't see there. I'm going to hit period on my number pad to zoom in. We'll just scale it up a bit bigger so we have a little bit more particles. Um, also, you can make sure that your plain fluid object is not rendering. We really only need the icosphere rendering. So go ahead and do that. Um, and with a little bit bigger of a uh, of plane now, it should render a few more particles visible up towards the front here. Um, I just want to make sure that they're not getting hidden either. Let me see if I go to Z so we can see how many particles there are. Um, and sometimes it just takes a simulation a bit of time to kind of push the particles towards the surface here. So that's one of the reasons why you want to use the end portion of your animation, not the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and change this back to about 250. And with that set up, we should be able to save our project here. And uh, we should be able to render out our splash pass. So I'm going to go to compositing, use nodes, backdrop. And for this, it's just going to be the splashes. And we're just going to save it out as an open EXR image. Um, it's black and white. We can leave it at half color depth, and um, yeah, that's basically it. We can uh, you can change the file if you want. Uh, I think um, Lucas used this option. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, but go ahead and change it if you want. And then in our file here, we're going to let me go back. Okay, this is the wrong file. <laughs> Just click on the desktop here. It's this one. I'm going to create a new file, and we'll name this Passes, so we're nice and organized. And then in that Passes folder, we're going to create another folder and call it Splashes. All right, I'm going to select that, accept. And uh, one more thing is, okay, we already set the samples to be just 75, because we don't need too many samples for our foam sort of pa pass. Blah, I can't talk right now. <laughs> All right, but that should do it. So with that set up, we can render this animation. All right, and our splash is finished. We rendered out all 150 frames, and they're ready for our final composition that we'll do a little later. Now we can kind of focus on some of the other render layers that we need to get ready before we can finish this scene. Now, one thing I probably will do is raise the dynamic paint a little bit as it was still kind of squared off here. I thought I might raise the floor a little bit again, like I did earlier, and rebake the dynamic paint. So this is... Um, something I showed how to do earlier, so I won't really, really cover too much again, but you're just going to raise it up a bit like so, just to cut back all this extra water there, and then I'm going to go ahead and bake it and blur it just like I did before. Um, like I said, you guys should know how to do this already, so I'm just going to uh, bake it and do the blurring like I did earlier, and we'll be good to go for the dynamic paint. Okay, and with that baked again, the dynamic paint that is. I can go ahead and just open it up again here and make sure I set the start frame to 150 again, but we should be good to go. If I go to rendered view now, we should have the updated dynamic paint across here. Um, I believe that's the updated version. Let's just check. Yes, it is. Um, and we have to change our ocean material back to normal. Because we're done with the splash pass, we can go ahead and do that. So we can grab the ocean, change it back to just normal ocean, and we should have our nice looking ocean there. And then for our rocks again, you can just grab them give them their rock materials like they get again. Both of these, rock one, actually I think this one was rock one, the other one was rock two. Doesn't really make a difference, but we'll do it anyways. Make this one rock two. And uh, yeah, now we can kind of see the dynamic paint. Uh, if you kind of scrub through here, you should be able to see it animated 
to see if it's working the way we want it to. It still looks like it's coming up more than it should. And it could possibly be... Alright, I think it's looking pretty close, though. So. Um, not too not too shabby. Uh, let me see what the ocean material is here now. Because whoop, I wanted a quick tweak. The amount of white at the surface here, you can kind of take that more or less. Um, I think I want a little bit more, though. All right, and we can give it a little bit more depth as I feel like our water might be a little shallow. So we can give it a little bit more depth to make that come up a little bit higher too. And as you can see, the higher you go, the more depth you get. Um, really cool node setup there. All right, so I'm just gonna leave the dynamic paint as it is and we'll see how it works as we go. Um, we can always cut it back a little bit here too in the compositor by grabbing that material and turning it down here. As you can see, the water is right along here. If I switch to solid view, and uh, it, it it is coming up a little bit through the mesh still, um, but that's that's kind of okay because it's been splashing for a while, as you can imagine. And uh, maybe if we just cut the black back a little bit here, we could yeah cut it back a little bit more as well. Okay. And if we change this to ease, or cardinal, we might get a little better fade there as well. But that's looking pretty good. So with that set up, let's go ahead and start our render passes. So in our render layers, we're going to uncheck splashes now as we're done with that. Um, I just realized I spelled that wrong. Oh well, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, and we're going to render just the top layer. And we're going to render vector. And then we're also going to render some glossy passes. We want a direct, indirect, and color for the glossy. Go ahead and check all three of those. And since we're using the newer version of Blender, we can save some time rendering by using the denoising feature. So go ahead and check that. And with those render layers set up, I believe, let me just double check, but I believe we are ready. Um, okay, one more thing. We can turn the alpha threshold down to zero. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but might as well do that. And we can go ahead and put our world settings, this is important to remember, turn on your glossy and transmission in both your world settings and on your ocean. So grab your ocean object, um, go to your object settings, and turn back your glossy and transmission as those were only unchecked for the splash pass. But with those back on, we should be ready to start rendering our actual layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and render just a single frame in the middle here somewhere, it doesn't really matter. Um, grab a frame in the middle here. Um, maybe back a little bit. Um, one other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this back down just a little bit as I feel like it came up just a little, little bit too high with it. We'll drop it down a little bit. Whoops, I did not do that right. Just grab along with Z and hold Shift to move slightly, and we'll pull it down a little bit more to get a little bit more of that wave splash. And like I said, this can be controlled by the angle of your shore. My angle is a little shallow when I bake this simulation, so um, if I was gonna be really picky, I might rebake it with a sharper angle so the waves just don't climb quite as high on sand. But you can uh, you can obviously experiment with that and do what you want. But with that, with that done, maybe just tad bit more I don't know we'll see how it looks with the dynamic paint if I go to rendered but with that done I think we can start um, yeah you can kind of see like the splashes on the shore now um, it might look good might not depends we'll render it and we'll see but um, with that done we can go ahead and save and we should be ready to do a render test so I'm gonna go ahead and go f12 we're just rendering frame 330 or 321 doesn't really matter and uh, we'll see, well, we're getting a little bit of an issue here. That's because we didn't turn the render back on on our sand. So for our sand, go ahead and check that box, save it, and we'll render again. All right, and switching over to our compositor now, choosing backdrop and changing our render layer, we can just disconnect this one, duplicate it. So we have our new render layer here, changing it to render layer. We can see we have our ocean scene here, and it looks relatively nice, not too bad. Um, and if we pull this out, we can tweak our settings here. We can set up our glossy shader first of all. So I'm gonna do that by adding in a math node, not a math node, a color mix RGB node. So right there, color, where do we have it? Mix, I get it messed up with the math node from time to time because they have some of the similar, similar settings, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay for me, not for you necessarily. But I'll go ahead and change it to add um, and glossy direct and glossy indirect are going to be added together here. And then I'll duplicate this one more time. 
and I'll change it to multiply and the glossy color will be multiplied over this. So if I check that out, you can see we have our glossy pass, which will render out and this will be added on later to add a little bit more reflections and glossiness to our ocean to make it look a little nicer. You can also see that bump mapping coming in that we have on the material and that looks really cool. Um, so to do this, I'm just going to do a file output. So output, file output, drop that in there and we're going to connect it up. And I'm just going to choose a new folder in here. We'll call it the glossy in our passes folder. Go ahead and choose that, accept. And now when we hit render animation, this will automatically render this pass out as an image sequence to that folder. So really cool. Um, and now we can go ahead and do the vector pass as well. This is going to kind of be causing the white caps that you see a little bit um, crashing onto the shore. And to do this, I'm going to go image, input. Um, we're looking for converter separate RGBA. So I'm going to take the vector, plug it into here, and then take the alpha channel from here, and this is going to be sort of our white caps. So I'm going to drop in a multiply node so we can kind of control the values of this. So in math, multiply, and I'm going to take it down real low. So we'll go about 0 0.05 just so we have the most information on these sort of white caps to work with. Um, I might even go lower, 0 0.01, and that looks pretty nice. So a nice low value to kind of work with these. Uh, maybe just a little 0 0.015 is pretty good. And uh, then we'll drop in a color ramp in case we wanted to tweak it. But I'm feeling like this is looking pretty good and I'll tweak it later. So you don't really need to worry about that. And then we're just going to go a file output again, like we did right here. I can just duplicate this one, pull it up here. And then of course we have to change the output so it's not putting it into the same folder. So we go back and create a new one. We'll call this one vector. Go ahead and choose that folder, accept. And now when we hit render animation, this is going to be rendered out into there. Um, so the last thing is we just want our main image to be rendered out as well. So I'll just connect it to the composite node and then this will use whatever setting we have here. So I'll set this up to be the combined or the, we'll just call it main, I guess and accept, and we can make this just a PNG. It doesn't have to be a super fancy, just make sure you turn off black and white as you want the color, so RGBA. Um, and this will render out all of our passes, our glossy pass, our vector pass, and our main combined pass. Okay, so this is gonna be the time when you wanna make sure your render's look pretty good before you go to rendering your animation, because um, it's gonna make all the difference. <laughs> so I do think I might tweak this a little bit, um, pull it down a little bit more to get a little bit more of that ocean. It, it's a little tricky. Um, I ended up with a simulation that kind of had some of these ridges uh, climbing the ocean there. And you can also tweak the, uh, the let me grab that, the smooth shader. This may or may not help with these areas. Uh, but I do think I'll crank the amount of smoothening up a little bit and that kind of smooths that out just a little better. Um, but I feel like that's looking pretty good. Um, like I said, it's a little squared off because of my simulation. If I raised the, the edge there, it would have looked a little bit better. And if I go to rendered view, we can look at the ocean. And I do think I might just want to tweak a little bit of the ocean material before I do this render. I'm just getting a little picky now, but I want to make sure it looks pretty good before we, uh, before we render it all out. So I'm going to go to render, and I think I just want to make the, the water right on the edge here to be a little brighter, as this is a little dark. So I'm going to go a little brighter, and you can see we just get a little bit nicer, shallower looking water. Cool. And maybe I can make it a little bit deeper as well. Um, you can see the deeper you get, not necessarily better, but a little bit deeper. Um, I might go about a three. I think that looks pretty cool. And I think we're ready to go. Um, if everything is set up here nicely, you can kind of tweak these values a little bit, pull them in, pull them out. Just kind of get in the right sort of ocean shore, but that is, I believe, all I need to do. <laughs> um, okay, let's, let's go for it. Let's render the animation out and see what we get. So I'm going to solid view, and all you have to do is check rendered animation 
and everything will be rendered out. Um, make sure your frame rate's set to whatever you want. We have denoising on, and your sample count. Sampling. Um, 128 will be fine for this demonstration. So, let's go for it. I'm just going to make it RGBA. Well, I'll leave the alpha on. Okay. And render animation. Alright, so as this is rendering here, I want a quick pop in to show you guys what it's looking like in the render passes folder here. So you can see in our main pass, we have all of our images rendering out like normal, like we'd want. And then if we go to something like our vector, you can see we have, well, the EXRs, but you can see the images are there for the black and white. And same thing with the glossy. You can see that all the images are piling up there. So it's really cool. The file output gets several images rendered out at the same time, and you can have so much more control later on, so that's why we're doing that. All right, so hold tight, and I'll let this render finish. Alrighty, and all of our frames finished rendering, and we're ready to combine them all. So again, I'm gonna do this in a separate blend file, as it's simpler. Um, this process could really be done in other programs too, like After Effects or Premiere, um, and you would have maybe more real-time playback, but I want to keep everything done in Blender, so I'm going to show you how to do it in Blender. But again, if you have some of the other software, it actually might be a little faster to do it in one of those programs. But for now, we're just going to create a new file after saving, of course. I think I just did that, though. So a new file and uh, reload a start file. And we'll just quick save this as a, uh, we'll just name it layers, as this is our layers file. Okay. And we'll go to our compositor then. And we'll change it to 1280 by 720, like our scene should be. And 24 FPS is fine. And use nodes and backdrop. Um, now we're not going to be using render layers, so I'm just going to disconnect that. And I'm going to add in our first image sequence, which is our main image sequence. So we're going to add in a new input texture. Whoops, that was not right. Color texture. Input image texture there we go open and we're going to choose the uh, passes and we're going to choose our main pass first so just an a to select everything and open them all we're going to choose cycle auto refresh and we'll set the start frame to 250 and then we'll have to change our timeline again to start at 250 and end at 400. all right if i zoom out a little bit there you can see that's working and uh, if i just go Control shift we can see our, uh, our rendered image here and let's start by adding the, uh, well, let's start by adding the wave, so the speed pass. So I'm going to just duplicate this image texture down here, and we're going to open up a new uh, image sequence, which is our vector. So hit A to select them all, open image sequence, and I'm going to plug it in to an RGB curves here, so we can kind of uh, color RGB curves, so we can kind of tweak it and get exactly the result we want. So plug it into the image there. And if we go Control Shift, we can see our white cap, our white capped uh, waves. And I'm just going to kind of tweak it a little bit by making it a little bit less white caps everywhere by pulling the value down here, but then making it a little bit more intense of a value by pulling it up here. And you can see that just really kind of gives us a more of a white cap and less, uh, less waves in areas that we don't necessarily want it. So I'm gonna pull it down a little bit, just so we have the white cap. You can pull it down a little bit here too, and just pull it up there. And something like that uh, is about right. So now I'm gonna plug this into a combined RGB uh, node. So let's go converter, combine RGBA. Plug it into there, but we're gonna plug it into the alpha. Now if we give each of these values one, so it's white, we'll have our wave, but with the black completely removed and just the uh, the white remaining. And we can use this with a mix node now, color mix, to mix in our real world image. <laughs> Put that in the top, and we have to check that box right there, and then you can get the white adding to your scene. And um, you can then adjust the intensity like you would here to get exactly the result you want. If I want to be a little bit more intense, I might pull that over a little bit more, bring in a little bit more waves. You can pull this up even higher or back more to get more intense waves. And this will be tweaked depending on how you feel it's looking across your scene. But I'll leave it at that for now. And we'll move on to adding in the splashes. So splashes are gonna be done pretty much the exact same way. We're gonna duplicate this. 
we're going to choose the splash pass. So we go to our splash pass, hit A, open them all, make sure the start frame is set to 250. And uh, we're going to plug this right in to an RGB curves so we can tweak it again. So color, RGB curves, plug it into the image. And then again, it's going to be into a combined RGBA and plug it into the alpha. Make sure all these values are set to one. They are still because I duplicated it. And then another mix node. Again, you want to make sure that options checked, plug it into the bottom. And you can see our splashes are added already. If I hit Alt V, I can zoom in here and then move around with my middle mouse wheel. Um, and we can kind of control the amount of these, the intensity of these by uh, changing this here again. So you can make it more intense or make it less by pulling it down. And uh, just to get the, uh, the result you're looking for. I like to see a lot of them actually. It's pretty cool. Um, and I feel like you can add as much of this as you want. And that just adds some of the really cool, these animated look really cool too, so it's going to really add some nice looking results. Alright, so everything's set up 250. Alright, we didn't set the start frame here, and that's why the waves were looking a little weird there. Now they're looking much better. Make sure you set the start frame on every one of your image sequences to 250. Okay, and we might be able to take the intensity down just a little bit there now. Okay, um, and if you're feeling your splashes are a little too, or your, yeah, your splash, I guess, is a little too intense, you can take that down a little bit too. But for the most part, they look pretty sweet. All right, and the last pass, which adds a lot, I think, is the extra glossy pass we rendered out. So let's go ahead and duplicate one of these image sequences and open up that glossy pass. So select it all, open it up. Set the start frame to 250, and we can go ahead and just use an add node to add this over our final image here. So I'm going to put an add node in there, and then we're going to connect the image to the add. Make it add, of course, and now you can see we have that extra glossy, so without and with. And this really just adds a lot to those white caps and stuff to add a little bit extra, extra pop. Um, and you can do another RGB curves here to adjust the intensity of it. If you want a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, a little bit more might be nice, but then you can turn down the factor amount too here to kind of tweak that. But uh, I think that that is looking very nice. Um, and if we wanted to render out a final animation, we could just do that by rendering out a video sequence, making sure your composite is connected at the end of your node tree. And we'd change it to something like FFmpeg, and I go to the encoding, and I'd choose something like H.264 in MP4 format. Um, one other thing that you can do now is any sort of color grading you'd want to do here. So you would drop in, say, a color balance node right there. I'd change it to offset slope, and then I'd give it a little bit of a, a warmish shadow, maybe, by dragging this upwards just a tad, and then a nice bluish highlight. So you can, you can tweak this all you want to get the kind of colors you're looking for. Something a little bit more bluish maybe, and this be a little bit more warmish. Something like that looks pretty good. And then you can kind of crush the blacks a little bit by pulling this value up. And you can enhance the whites a little bit by pulling this value up. You don't want to go too crazy, but a little bit can make it look, uh, look a bit nicer. And then if you really wanted it to pop, you could add just a little bit more saturation by dropping in a hue saturation node and change it to about 1.1. You get just a little bit more intensity, which looks cool. But I feel like that's going to do it. Just make sure your composite node is at the end. And with that all set and done, well, the last thing to do is render it out. Um, one last thing is if you have a little bit more foam than you want hanging around back here due to particles in a spot that you might not want, you can easily add in a mask right here, or back here under our splash. So to do this, it's just going to be a simple distort or mat. You can do a box mat, or you can do an eclipse mask. I'm going to use an eclipse mask. I'm going to go control shift to it. And I just know that I want it to be up here. -ish. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to change my X and Y values to pull them up there. I'm holding shift so I can do a little bit more uh, tweaking to the size and scale without it moving too much. So I'm going to put just about right there is good. I'm going to color invert the node. So it's a white and black image then. And then I'm going to filter blur. And you can just set this to something like a fast Gaussian. 
set it to Y, set it to like a 15, 15. So it's something that's very blurred. Um, maybe that's too much. We'll try 10 maybe. And then with that set and done, we just multiply it over our image here. So a color, mix, set it into our splash layer here, set it to multiply, and multiply it on the bottom. So if you check out our splashes now, you can see that we have the black area uh, over here. And if we wanted to kind of move that around, we could change the scale here a little bit and the location to kind of place it where we want less foam, which would be up towards the top of the scene maybe, right around there. And then you can blur it as much as you want or make it a little bit bigger if you wanted um, and do, do pretty much whatever you want with it now. And that's just to kind of take out some foam particles if you felt like there was too much in certain areas. So going back to the original now, you can see that took out a lot of them, um, probably a little bit more than I want to take out. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit just by maybe pulling it out of the screen a little bit more. Pulling it over there, pulling it up a little bit more, something like that. Um, and let's go back to see what that looks like. Pull it out of the way. And that looks pretty cool. So you can see that with and then without, you get rid of some of the foam that might be uh, in spots that don't look super realistic. But with that set and done, you don't have to do this 100% either. If you took it down just a little bit, you can leave a little bit of a light foam in there, which is kind of cool. So I might go like a 0.8. But with that said and done, let's render this animation out so you guys can see the final results. And uh, that should do it. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. And uh, let's render it. So I'm going to choose my output file here, which is just going to be, uh, I'll just put it right in our render passes folder here. Jump back. We'll name it final accept and render your animation. Make sure it's RGB right there. I don't know if that was unchecked, but make sure it's RGB and we'll render the animation. It will render out real quick here and we'll see what we get. Okay, so the final animation is now rendered out and here we have it. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. You can see those the vector um, blur, the vector pass, adding that white cap effect to the, uh, the tips of the waves there, making it look real nice along the shore. Um, you could possibly cut this back a little bit, or turn it down just a little bit as it's a little bit intense maybe, but I think it looks pretty close to good. Um, and you see those fluid particles just kind of floating on the ocean there looking real cool. Um, and I love it when they kind of reach the shore here. Like I said, if you ran the simulation a little bit more, or maybe even added more fluid particles, you could have even more of those along the shore, and that would look really cool. Um, and the ocean shore here, I would probably lift up the sand just a little bit more to kind of hide some of this fluid here that just, just kind of stuck to the surface and doesn't look super great. But overall, I think it looks pretty good, and that's going to do it for this tutorial project. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed creating this. I definitely did. I learned a lot myself doing this. A uh, huge shout out to Lucas Weber, and definitely check him out on YouTube at artilblender.com. He uh, made this possible by coming up with this technique. And if you're interested in downloading the finished tutorial file, there will be a link over on my Patreon page where you can get access to this and all the other blend files on my channel for just $3 a month. Um, it supports me and keeps me going, and it's a way of giving you guys a little perk. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and if you made something cool, share it in the comments because we all want to see it, and that'll do it for me. So I'll see you guys on the flippity-flop.